Hello friends, my name is D. Raju. I am working as lecturer in chemistry at Government College Autonomous, Anandapur. So in this video, we will discuss about the loss of thermodynamics. See what are the learning objectives of this video are. What is the zeroth law of thermodynamics? What is the first law of thermodynamics and what are its various statements? And what is the mathematical form of a first law? And uh, how the first law will be converted into other forms in various processes like isothermal process, adiabatic process, etc. And also we will discuss here what is enthalpy and uh, about enthalpy and uh, what is the second law of thermodynamics, what are the various statements of second law of thermodynamics and uh, also we will discuss here about the concept of entropy and also we will discuss here about the statement of third law of thermodynamics. Now, now we will move on to the concept of zeroth law of thermodynamics and this zeroth law of thermodynamics was formulated after first and second law of thermodynamics. The statement of the zeroth law is if two systems are in thermal equilibrium with the third system separately then they must be in thermal equilibrium with each other and this statement can be illustrated in this diagram. Let us suppose this A is an object which is in thermal equilibrium with P and this A is also in thermal equilibrium with C. Then what this zeroth law of thermodynamics will tell us is this B and C are also will be in thermal equilibrium with each other. So this is the concept of zero law of thermodynamics and uh, the application of this law can be found out in the working of thermometer. As we know thermometer is an instrument which measures the temperature. So temperature is nothing but this is the degree of hotness and uh, how this thermometer works is can be shown in this uh, uh, example. Let us suppose this A is a metallic object and B is a water body. So A and B are two different objects. Let us suppose this C is a thermometer. C is a thermometer as we have seen here and this thermometer has come into contact with A and it uh, got its thermal equilibrium. That means the hotness of both A and C are becoming equal. Let us suppose this C is also in thermal equilibrium with B. So that means what? The thermometer C is in thermal equilibrium with A and C is also in thermal equilibrium with B. Then what this zeroth law will tell us? The temperature of A and B are equal. That means degree of hotness of A and B both are equal. So in this way, the working of thermometer can be explained with the help of zeroth law. Now we will discuss about first law of thermodynamics. So this first law of thermodynamics is the application of law of conservation of energy. According to this law of conservation of energy, energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but one form of energy can be converted to other form of energy. That means what? We cannot create energy, we cannot destroy the energy, but energy in one form can be converted to the other form of energy. That means energy remains the same. We cannot create it. We cannot destroy it. So this is the statement of law of conservation of energy. And the other form of this statement is the energy, internal energy of an isolated system is constant. So this can be explained with, a, with this example. Let us suppose we take a system and uh, that system is having certain amount of internal energy and we will isolate that system. So we will completely isolate that system with the surroundings and after one month if we see the internal energy of that particular system will be constant, will be like before. So the energy cannot be created in that system or internal energy cannot be destroyed in that system. So that means the isolated system will have a constant internal energy. This is the another statement for first law of thermodynamics. Then, based on the Joule's experiments. So, Joule, the scientist Joule did the experiments and concluded that there is equivalence between work and heat. That means heat can be converted to work and work can be converted to heat 
and both are mechanically equivalent and this is the Joule's statement which states that there is exact equivalence between the heated work. So based on all these principles we can say that it is impossible to con construct a perpetual motion machine. What is this perpetual motion machine? This perpetual motion machine is the machine which do the work without consumption of heat or without consumption of heat energy. So that is impossible. That means we cannot draw the work without giving heat. So this is the conclusion of these various statements of the first law of thermodynamics. Now we will discuss what are the various mathematical forms of first law of thermodynamics. First initially we will discuss what is the mathematical form of first law and later we will move on to how this first law changes its form in various processes. First we will see, let us suppose this letter W indicates the work done on a system and Q indicates the heat transferred to a system. So we are doing some work on a system and we are giving certain amount of heat to a system. Then the internal, because of these things, the internal energy of that particular system will change. So as we know, the internal energy is a like a bank. If you do some work or if you do if if you do give some heat, then that will be stored in the system in the form of internal energy. So because we are doing the work W and we are giving the heat Q, then the internal energy changes like delta U equal to Q plus W. So this is the mathematical form of the first law of thermodynamics. So we are giving some amount of heat and we are doing some work on it and because of these two energy changes there will be increase in its internal energy of the system delta u equal to q plus w. Let us suppose if w here is the gas expansion work at constant pressure. As we know in expansion work w can be written as minus p external into delta v. So if we substitute this minus p delta v into this equation then this equation can be rearranged as Q is equal to delta U plus P delta V and this is the another mathematical form of the. Now we will discuss how the first law becomes or how the equation of first law becomes in various processes. First we will take about isothermal process. As we know in isothermal process there will not be any change in temperature that is delta T equal to 0. But also we know that delta u that is change in internal energy is equal to cv into delta t. Here this cv is the heat capacity at constant volume and this delta t is zero in isothermal process. So therefore delta u becomes zero in isothermal process. Then q is equal to minus w because delta u is becoming zero. So what does this mean? What is q? Q is the absorbed heat because it is having positive sign this is the absorbed heat and what is minus W? So this is a work done by the system. This minus sign indicates the work done by the system. So what we can say here, what we can say here the total heat absorbed by the system is utilized to perform the work. So in isothermal process if a system absorbs Q amount of heat that heat completely will be utilized to perform the work by the system and this is the isothermal process. If we go to adiabatic process, as we know in adiabatic process there will not be any exchange of heat between the system and surroundings therefore Q is equal to 0. That means there is no supply of heat from outside surroundings. So therefore if we substitute this Q equal to 0 in this first law then what how first law will becomes then first law becomes delta U equal to W or this can also be written as minus W equal to minus delta U. What does it mean? Minus W is the work done by the system. And what does this delta U indicate? This is the change in internal energy and this minus sign indicates the decrease in its internal energy. That means in adiabatic process the system will perform the work by the compensation of internal energy. By the utilization of internal energy the system will do the work because there is no supply of heat from outside. Then in isochoric process, in isochoric process there is no change in volume that is change in volume dv or delta v equal to 0 as we know w is equal to minus p into delta v that becomes 0. 
So therefore, first law becomes delta U is equal to Q. What does it mean? The total absorbed heat will be utilized to increase the internal energy, but there is no work to perform. So therefore, the total heat absorbed by the system is utilized only to increase the internal energy in isochoric process. So therefore, this delta U can be written as QV. Why QV? Because delta U is becoming Q at constant volume condition. So therefore, delta U can be written as QV. QV is nothing but delta U. Then we will move on to isobaric process. In isobaric process, there is no change in the pressure. So therefore, delta U is equal to Q plus W according to first law of thermodynamics. And this W can be written as minus P delta V. So therefore, Q becomes delta U plus P delta V. So Q is equal to delta U plus P delta V. Here, the absorbed heat Q is utilized in two ways. One is to increase the internal energy of the system or increase, increase in internal energy is nothing but the temperature and P delta V is nothing but the expansion work. So here, the system is utilizing the absorbed heat in two ways. One is to increase the internal energy, other is to perform the expansion work. Now we will go to the process, cyclic process. So as we know, in cyclic process, change in state function is zero because system undergoes many changes and come back to the initial state. Therefore, there is no change in state of a system. Therefore, any property which is a state function becomes zero in cyclic process. That is delta U becomes zero here because U is, an inter U is internal energy which is a state function. So change in its state function in cyclic process is zero therefore delta u becomes zero then the first law becomes q is equal to minus w that is the total heat is utilized to do the work so q becomes minus w here so then we will move on to concept called enthalpy and this enthalpy is denoted by the symbol h first law at constant pressure conditions can be written as like this q is equal to delta u plus p delta v and this q at constant pressure conditions is called as heat content at constant pressure that is QP. So QP is equal to delta U plus P delta V and this QP is called as change in enthalpy delta H. So therefore first law can be written as QP can be replaced with delta H. So therefore delta H is equal to delta U plus P delta Now we will move on to second law of thermodynamics. Here first we will discuss what are the limitations of first law and why the need for the second law has come. First one is, first law did not explain the direction of flow of heat. That means it did not tell us whether the heat can be moved from a hot body to a cold body or from cold body to a hot body. And also it did not tell us which process is spontaneous and which process is non-spontaneous. According to first law, Q equal to minus W in a cyclic process. What does it mean? The total amount of heat absorbed can be utilized to do the work. But in practice, in experimental conditions, this is not possible because the machine which is manufactured based on this principle is a failure. So it did not tell us uh, about uh, the failure of this particular process. And also the second law here discuss about the spontaneity of a particular process and uh, in what conditions the process becomes a spontaneous one. Now we will discuss what are these spontaneous processes and what are these non-spontaneous processes. The processes which takes place with own occurred are without outside assistance are called as spontaneous processes. That means the processes which takes place themselves without any help of the outside thing is called as a spontaneous process. And all these natural processes are spontaneous processes. All natural processes are spontaneous processes. And in the next slide, we will see some examples. So in other way, the processes which takes place with outside help are called as non-spontaneous processes. That means those processes cannot occur on themselves, they will take place only with the help of some other external agency. 
Here we will see what are the examples for spontaneous processes. Flow of heat from high temperature to low temperature. Flow of water from high level to low level. Flow of air from high pressure to low pressure areas. And evaporation of liquid to vapor. Fusion of solid to liquid. Sublimation from solid to gas. Current flowing from high potential to low potential areas. And also the reactions in which the more number of gaseous molecules are produced in the form of products. So these are the examples for spontaneous processes. Now we will discuss about the concept of entropy. And entropy gives the measurement of randomness or disorder. So how much disorder is there? How much randomness is there is given by the term entropy. In spontaneous processes, disorder or randomness increases. So if we come if you want to compare the entropy of a gas with a liquid and solid. In gases, the molecules are in utmost freedom. They are completely in freedom or completely in disorder. Therefore, the gaseous system will have more of the highest entropy. Whereas in solids, there will be perfect arrangement of atoms or molecules or ions present in it. Therefore, there is a zero disorder and we can say that the entropy of solid is least. So in all natural processes, entropy increases. So therefore we can state uh, this statement. Entropy of universe always increases and tends to be maximum. Because in universe, all the processes which are taking place are natural processes. In natural processes, as the entropy increases, the entropy of the universe always increases and tends to be maximum. Now, we will discuss what are the various statements of second law of thermodynamics? First of all, when we will discuss about Clausius statement. So, according to this Clausius statement, it is impossible to construct a machine working in cycles which will transfer heat from a lower temperature to higher temperature without the aid of an external agency. So, that means what? That means heat cannot be transferred from a lower temperature body to a higher temperature body. If that happens, that machine is called as perpetual motion machine of second kind. So, Clash's statement says that it is impossible to construct this machine. So, this can be shown like this here. Heat can be moved from hot body to cold body, but heat cannot be moved from cold body to hot body. And this is the portrait of the great uh, physical chemist Clausius. Now we will move on to the second statement which is called as Kelvin statement. According to this Kelvin statement, no process is possible in which the sole result is the absorption of heat from a reservoir and its complete conversion into work. What does it mean? This means you cannot completely convert Q into W. That means you cannot utilize the total amount of heat absorbed to do the work. But this Q is always greater than W. You cannot 100% convert the Q into W. And this is the portrait of Kelvin who contributed a lot of things to the physical chemistry. Now, the entropy statement. As already we have discussed, so because all the natural processes are spontaneous processes and in all the spontaneous processes, entropy increases. So therefore, entropy of the universe increases and it tends to be maximum. And these three statements are the statements of second law of thermodynamics. Now we will move on to the third law of thermodynamics. And this third law of thermodynamics is based on Nernest heat theorem. And this is the portrait of great physical chemist Nernest who contributed in the form of Nernest equation where we can see his name in uh, electrochemistry and also Nernest distribution law in solutions. So see, what does this Nernest heat theorem says? Nernest heat theorem says the entropy change in any physical or chemical transformation approaches zero as the temperature approaches zero Kelvin provided all the substances involved are perfectly crystalline. That means, if we take perfectly crystalline substances 
and uh, as the temperature approaches 0 kelvin then in that particular physical or chemical transformation the entropy change tends to be zero so based on this theorem we can state the third law of thermodynamics like this the entropy of all perfect crystalline substances is zero at absolute zero temperature that means at zero kelvin for a perfect crystalline substance the entropy becomes zero so this can be shown in the form of this mathematical equation limit s equal to zero as the temperature tends to zero kelvin and this is the third law of thermodynamics so so friends till now we have discussed uh, in this video about zeroth law of thermodynamics and how the thermometer find its application with the help of zeroth law of thermodynamics and what is the first law of thermodynamics what is its mathematical form in different types of processes how the mathematical form of first law can be altered and the concept of enthalpy the second law of thermodynamics and its various statements what are the spontaneous processes what is the concept of entropy and what is the statement of third law of thermodynamics and if you want more information about these things you can find those things in uh, the references given here so this is about the loss of thermodynamics thank you thank you very much thanks for watching